friends, comment allez-vous? Très bien. Well, don't turn off the video. In today's lesson, we're going to learn common French words used in English. Now, I'm sure sometimes when you read tabloids, magazines, you read newspapers, or you watch interviews mainly of film stars, uh, very often you may have come across words that you feel are not English words, but are used, you know, when uh, people speak or when you read articles. Well, yes, those are very common French words that are used in English today. Okay, so I'm going to take you through a few French words that are very commonly used in English. Well, uh, the other day I happened um, to meet one of my very old friends and uh, she was uh, shifting, about to shift to another country. So I told her, let's catch up for dinner before you leave. So we decided to have a rendezvous. Now a rendezvous means a meeting at a fixed place and a fixed time. So we decided to have a rendezvous before she left and um, we thought let's catch up at a new cafe which was quite far from our uh, from from the city. So when I reached the place, um, I had a deja vu. Now you know what's a deja vu? It's a feeling that you get when you go to a place that you feel you've come here before but you just don't know when. Actually you haven't been there before. But when you are there, you f there, there is this experience that you have that I have come here before. I, I can't recollect when, but I have, you know, uh, experienced this uh, f surrounding. So a deja vu is something that it's a very strong feeling that you've been here before. Or sometimes you encounter certain situations in your life. And uh, when it happens, you feel this has happened to me before. Actually, it hasn't. But somewhere you do get this feeling. And then you say, oh, I have a deja vu. So I had a deja vu because I felt that I have come here before but I just, I mean it was quite weird because it was a new cafe and I've never, you know, um, gone around that side of town. Well, and then I was waiting for my friend and when I called her, she said I'm en route. Now en route means that she was on her way. So when you're going from one place to another place and you're traveling or you're on your way, you say I'm en route. Okay, and when she arrived, I saw she came sans her husband. Now, sans her husband means without her husband. So the word sans means without. Okay, so sometimes you catch the most popular film stars, the most good looking ones, sans makeup. That means you see them or you, you see them on television or on a uh, cover magazine without makeup. Okay, and when I asked her why she didn't bring her husband, uh, well, she told me he was busy packing, you know, the last minute closing down. Okay, so then we sat at the cafe and decided to go a la carte. Now, what's a la carte? A la carte is when you have a menu card uh, where every dish has a separate price. So when we decided to go a la carte, uh, we ordered a plate of pasta and a pizza. But then, unfortunately, the waiter made a faux pas. Then you know what's a faux pas? It's a mistake. So he brought us another table's order, something that we didn't order for. So when you make a faux pas, that means you've made a mistake. It could also mean you're doing something that is socially embarrassing.
Okay. So many times uh, you may have read that uh, this celebrity made a fashion faux pas that means uh, you know had a, a malfunction wardrobe kind of thing. So we say faux pas and very uh, very commonly used in English. All right. Well, and then we finally got what we ordered for, and the food was uh, vis a vis good. That means, in you know, comparatively good or in comparison, so vis a vis good to other cafes. Okay, so when you say vis a vis, it means in relation to, in comparison to. Sometimes it also means face to face. Okay, friends, I hope these few French words are uh, very clear to you now. And I'm going to take a look at some more words that we use in English. Okay, so while chatting and um, having dinner, we spoke a lot about the passé, that means uh, past times or something that's outdated. So when I say we spoke a lot about passé, that means, uh, you know, the past that we had, we shared jokes, we recollected a lot of college incidents, okay. And well then, finally, her chauffeur came to receive her. Now, a chauffeur is a driver who ferries you around wherever you want to go. And I'm sure you've heard, uh, you know, terms like, oh, she has a chauffeur-driven car. That means she has a chauffeur who drives her around. Okay, so a chauffeur came to receive her, and uh, I felt a little sad because it was time to bid adieu. Now this word is pronounced as adieu or adu. Both are correct. So when I say bid adieu, it means it was time to bid farewell or just say goodbye. And uh, well. I gave her a small souvenir. Now, a souvenir is a small memento uh, that you give someone that reminds you of a person or a thing or a place. Now, um, if t speaking about uh, Italy, uh, Paris, you know, you get these lovely keychains that are Eiffel Tower uh, small mementos that you give to people, you know, when you just as remembrance or re resemblance of a particular place. Okay, so I gave her a souvenir just as a, mem uh, a memento so she could you know whenever she looks at it she remembers uh, that Rachna gave it to me all right and then I told her bon voyage now bon voyage means have a safe journey and well and then it was time to return home and when I did come home I was uh, pretty sad I was really upset and when my sister asked me what happened I told her the entire thing that you know we caught up after long and only to know that she was moving to a new country and uh, she said you know these things happen you meet friends you part and uh, say la vie say la vie that means that's that is life Well, so next time when you are consoling a friend or a family member or a colleague uh, because they are sad uh, due to whatever has happened in their life and you can always tell them don't worry say la vie that means you try to tell them that's life these things happen okay uh, well this brings me to the end of this lesson I hope you enjoyed watching it. I'm sure next time you're going to read tabloids, magazines, newspapers or watch um, interviews or film stars. You'll exactly know what they're talking about when they use these uh, French words that are very commonly used in English. All right. And um, I'll be back soon with a new lesson. Till then, you take care and bye.